was coming in. Um, they're coming from the podium. I asked the team from Ames United to join us. So my understanding is that you are all interested in being part of IIT. Or you want to take to pros and this is how? This is great. Yeah. Well, if you want to take leadership roles in this one of the things I'm asking you all and discussing with you all, can you take on some of the IAC activities? You don't have to do anything new or different from what you already are doing, what we are doing already doing. You just have to tweak it a little bit if necessary to fit into the IAC mode. Okay, there is an IAC calendar of activities. We will figure out how we can find common ground between what you all are what you're already doing and what we have to do. Okay? So, for example, you uh, celebrated the Grand Bara Baza, Baza Bara, Grand Baza Bara. Grand Bara. That was a poster competition. Yeah. Right? Marketing, basically. Marketing poster competition. Which is um, a fine activity to fit into the IIC campaign. All we did was, you did what you did. All we did was stamp IAC logo. It doesn't even have to have AHAB logo. It's not an AHAB activity. It doesn't have to be an AHAB activity. As long as it's campus activity and have IAC logo, it's good for IAC. Um, all IAC activities have to happen in departments and schools on campus. These are not necessarily AHAB activities that you all have to attend. You could even Raman and I call you all here. The reason I call you all here instead of you know, just having this screen in your classroom is I asked uh, leadership from Podium Club to come join us. I asked leadership from Ames United to join us. And uh, somebody else I asked two four. So four clubs. Each of you can take on activities on the calendar. And figure out how they fit your That way, everybody gets to do what they want and still meet the IAC requirement. At the end of the year, I will certainly make a spreadsheet of who did what and we will go all the way to the IAC council. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got your note, I will write those reports. I'll send it to you. Sorry for the delay. Hi, please come in. Have a seat. Make yourself comfortable because we'll be sitting here for at least one and a half hours. Yes, you can go. All of you are from CSC? Yes, sir. Triple E. Triple E. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to Oh, welcome. All three of you? Yes. Manu, na, Ramiro, you, were you sitting in that session when I was uh, speaking? No, no, no. Good evening. Okay, good. Please sit. There is no problem. This is not a class. So you all are uh, in Corium or? Yes, we are in Corium here. You are in Corium Club. Okay, that's good. All, all of you that walked in just now. Nobody from AU United here. Okay, I asked them to come too. But I asked E4 folks to come too. But that's okay. Your E4. Is anybody else coming in from E4? Yes, sir. Can I come in? Good afternoon. Please, please have a seat. Thank you for coming early, actually. It's going to be 24. It's going to be It's nice to watch. Is he actually what? So I called the few student club leadership. The pharmacy students were Japan actually, you know, the crew that uh, participated in the international exchange uh, program in Africa. I told those uh, people and everybody to do that. Apparently, there is some kind of magazine or something. Walu Pati Akshay Bhutaru and Walu Pati Brahma Junaro Japan. Anybody who can come with you guys? And after the college, I'm excluding the platform. So, it's the. Uh, so I was just sharing with you guys. So some of them are from Austin, School of International Business. These six. Yes. 
from six. Back uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of them are all from uh, Kodium Club. The lady at the end is from E4. You're also in Kodium on this one, right? Yeah. No. She is from E4. E4 is an alternative club. Uh, Kodium is a pre incubation center that is set up for all students, but mostly computer science and engineering. Uh, it's a mostly CSE pre incubation center. Um, so we are waiting or we are expecting a few folks from AU. IAC activities, how many of you are aware of IAC? I know all of you are. Awesome. Students are aware of IAC. None of you are aware of IAC. Okay. IAC stands for Institutional Institutions Innovation Council. Institutions Innovation Council. It was set up by the Ministry of Education and all higher education institutions in the country are expected to have an IAC. It's not required yet. It will be required at some point in the near future, but right now they're only recommending that we have it and they're strongly encouraging. Okay, what is the role of an IAC? An IAC's role primarily is to promote the culture of innovation and entrepreneurship. He called me and said, why did you join this college, especially those of you in junior class? To improve skills while conducting your career. Huh? Sorry? To improve skills. To improve skills. You are telling me what you think I want to hear. Placements. Am I right? Okay. Am I right? Yes. It's okay to be honest. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Hi, guys. Just where are you from, coming from? I'm in which club? Codium. You too? Okay. Wow. Good representation in Korea. We are just getting started. Um, we'll go around introducing ourselves after watching the video, okay? There's a 45 minute video, we'll watch that. But um, just briefly, why are you watching this video? So the purpose of IIC, Institutions Innovation Council, and I'm hoping that each of you will be a member, student member of IIC going forward from March 1st week. Okay? The purpose of IIC is to promote a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship. Like you just said, most of us students come to this campus or any campus in any engineering college expecting to have good placement. Right? We want a job after the four years of whatever grind we are going through. In Asif case, it's similar but not as concrete. Of course, you also want jobs. But um, the purpose of college is not to give you a job. The purpose of college is to encourage you to think differently, think openly, think beyond your four walls or think outside the box, so to speak, and explore the world around you. Come up with innovative ways to resolve challenges around you. Uh, uh, is your education encouraging you? Is your curriculum encouraging you to look at the world differently every time? Is the question you have to ask yourself. Okay? If that is not happening, then we have a challenge. It is a recognized fact across the country that our higher education institutions are stagnant. We are not doing what we are supposed to do. We are not doing. We are not giving the students what we are we are supposed to give. One of you will be an IAS officer. More, more than one of you might be an IAS officer in the near future. Some of you might be MLAs and MPs. Some of you will be doctors, engineers, whatever else you want to be. Right? Imagine yourself 20, 30 years from now. I'll be 80 years old and I'm struggling to keep my health insurance and one of you will be that officer approving. Right? Your college education is supposed to equip you to make a good decision there. And if you don't get that right education, then I will be the person suffering. Most of us, my generation realized that. That is why something like IIC came into existence. We want to change the campus culture, not just here, everywhere, from focus on grades and placements to innovation and entrepreneurship. That is the purpose of IIC. How do we do that is a big question. It's easy to say something. It's easy to say, I want to go up the Mount Everest. Yeah, easy to say. Getting up there is going to be a very big challenge. So how do we get there? Ministry of Education gave us some broad guidelines and gave us a list of events that we should conduct. Events and just so why do we conduct event? So we can have some music and dance around and have fun, right? 
that also but more importantly there is a purpose for every event these events are listed out saying celebrate national technology day uh, national education day or national something else day whatever it is or they say conduct a workshop on entrepreneurship okay conduct a workshop on innovation something or the other they'll give you a list of events every quarter for the whole year they'll give you a list of events we're supposed to conduct it the idea is if we conduct the event even if we don't pay attention this year maybe two years three years down the line the entire campus will start changing its culture from a focus on placements and grades to innovation on entrepreneurship right you probably heard this if you say something number of times at some point it will start ringing like it is true so if you keep telling yourself i'm going to be an innovator i'm going to be an innovator by the time you turn you turn 60 years old maybe you will be no, i'm just joking but that is that is not that's too long two three years is good enough you just have to believe in it and you have to keep repeating yourself until you believe it. that is the whole point of this okay now we're going to watch a little video it's 45 minute video another um, gentleman older than me who with a lot of experience is going to speak to us about you so i want you to carefully listen and reflect upon your journey following what i say this is a good video he goes at a very good slow pace allowing you to think allowing you to engage with him so i really want you to apply yourself and engage with him okay they they curate these videos from experts from across the country so they do a decent job it may seem like a boring thing if you don't pay attention if you pay attention and engage with the content it will be a good useful thing okay after the video is done we will talk about it Yeah, yeah, please come in. Please come in. Export house now for the last thirty-two years. Last twenty years, I'm with students and teaching what I have learned, what is I have gained while working as an entrepreneur, as an engineer, and just. New things about studying, working, and entering into our professional life, such as our working, will contribute 
Kingdom. Who? Who is some? Create a big successful life for us. Uh, this talk of about 13 14 minutes is not based on academic things. It is based on my experience of last many years of learning, learning almost every day at different places of our world and also from you who have learned their lessons in their lives. Our friends, uh, I have created an agenda for us for today. And I want to create uh, some value for your time that you have invested in very important minutes. Before we start, I'll give you my agenda as we go ahead. If you would like to take out The basis of the questions is that while giving answers, please write down an answer that comes first to your mind. Do not think so much. Psychologically, what comes first to our mind is embedded in our minds very prominently. And that is why it springs up the first thing when we think of a question. So please mind this and do it this way. Don't give a lot of time. Having said this, just five questions. The first question is, I want you to rewind your life and think when you were in 8th, ninth, or 10th standard. This need not be a but what is the first one thing that comes to your mind? And you were in the 12th standard or in the second year of uh, diploma in engineering. Write down just the one thing that comes to your mind when you think of it. My third question is think today, think the year you are attending to this college. And think of two things. One that is going as what we have thought of. 
and one that is not at all going as you want it to go. These two things we should write down. The fourth point is about Did you catch the questions that he was talking about so far? Yes. Are you making notes for yourself? Nobody is. Okay. I will trust you on that. He's asking you to think about what you thought about when you were in 8th grade or 12th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, something around there. Uh, what um, so and then what is going on now? What is going according to what you wanted or what you planned, and what is not going according to what you planned? Yeah. And the last and the fifth question is: Now you are graduated. You have got what you dreamt of. In the fourth question, think of yourself five years down the line. You have graduated and five years have gone. You have walked the path of professional life for five years. And you look back. Where do you see yourself after five years of graduation? What will make you happy if you are there at that position after five years? My dear friends, these answers are not to be shown to anyone. You can then change the answers as you go, as your life unfolds. However, this piece of paper or these notes on your smartphone do not leave it there. Put a date on them, today's date, and then after a few years, you know at this time, at this age, I was thinking this. These five questions can be elaborated further, broken down into small, small pieces. This is just an example that I've given you, which covers the past, the present, and the future. Many of you know that I run a talk show, right? Yes. Yeah. The reason, one of the main reasons, there are two main reasons. One main reason I'll share is for reflection. Very few of us spend the time to think back on what we did or what happened and change our actions based on what we learned from our reflection. So reflect on what we did. Reflection is not something that we get taught in our classes, which is unfortunate. We should all be taught how to reflect right from our schools. We just don't do that. Sometimes when we sit with our grandparents, they talk about how it used to be when they were little kids. Our parents yell at us saying, when we were kids, we were not this bad. That's not true reflection. Reflection is something that is for yourself. 
what it is that happened, what was your role in it, what were the consequences, and what could you have done differently to get a different consequence, whatever you desire. Right, that's reflection, you think about it. It often happens to us when we are either in a very happy mood or very sad mood. Then we think back, is that how did we get here? If we are happy, we are very proud of ourselves and we are like, okay, we did something right. What did we do? How, did, how can I replicate that? When we are really sad, then we think back and say, what in the world did I do? How did I do that bad? That's when we reflect. Otherwise, we don't. We don't care to spend time. Right? If you took this seriously, and you should, because you are at a critical stage in your life in college, you should really write this down with a date on it. What were you thinking about your life when you were 8th grade, 10th grade? Now, what is going well for you as you plan and what is not going well for you? At the time of graduation, what would you like to do? And then five years from there, what would you be like? When students come to me asking for an internship or asking for advice, mentorship, whatever, one of the questions I ask them is, 10 years from now if I meet you, who am I looking at? Oftentimes there's no answer. Because almost nobody is thinking that way. Everybody is thinking about four years job, Will I get a job after this? It's important, but you don't want to just join another job. You are not that stupid. You're way smarter than that. You can pick and choose. It depends on how you apply yourself and how you consider yourself. That is what this guy is asking you to do. Take it seriously, make a note for yourself, put a date on it, and you will get back to it when it is time. If you don't do it now on your smartphones or whatever notebooks you may have, do it today. It is for yourself, not for me. You don't have to show it to anybody. This is important, this is useful, okay? You tailor the questions according to your needs, try to fill them, keep them with you, and they make a time for you. And this is my experience. Please do it. I would urge you to consider this and do it. Friends, there will be some dream, a positive dream, where you will be answering your fifth question. The dream for a bright future. And uh, Based on my experience, I have crafted just three point agenda for you. And I believe if you hear here carefully for the next 30 40 minutes, I should try to implement this agenda of just three points. I'm confident these points have a potential shape your life as you dream. I'll just read the agenda, three points, and then go point by point. My first point is that first we understand the scenario 
convince you need to understand your question this night before taking any action. So we'll first see what today's scenario is and how an individual student, engineering student, professional student, management student, catering student, and the institution can find a place into the scenario. My second point is for finding a place, once we know the scenario, we must try to visualize the needs and the skill sets that are needed for the changed scenario. The scenario is going to change that you already know. What are the challenges? I call them interesting challenges. And also great opportunities that the challenges will bring along with them. We need to visualize the opportunities also. Not just think of the challenges. And my third agenda point, which is very important, is having understood the scenario, having understood what I need to do it, to handle the scenario and the challenges. The third important point is how do we do it? Please tell me how I can do it. So we will talk about the steps that we can take from today onwards that can make sure that we have created a place for ourselves in the main, mainstream of development in the mainstream of change and the development. So that is the just three points. Understand the scenario, see the skill sets that are needed, and third is how do we do it. So the first point of the agenda. The current scenario is changing very fast. Social, industrial, professional, you name it. Everything will change. And let's believe that change will be constant. We all have challenges. I'm not going to discuss so much about the challenges because you know, we do know the challenges already. The challenges are talked over and over again in social media, in print media, on phone with friends, on WhatsApp and everywhere. So you yourself can visualize the challenges. And the challenges will change a little according to your background, according to your thinking, according to your dreams. So let's not talk about the challenges and the you know the normally talk multidisciplinary approach. And if you are in mechanical engineering, just try to make friends with methods you IT production and so on and so forth. That is very important that we must do. But with the change in the scenario, that is not enough. So let's see first that what are the opportunities that we have? Challenges, you know, already we had a couple of minutes talk on that. So what opportunities will be? And to me, it will bring some, some great opportunities, but we talk about the most important opportunity important that concerns you today, my students, is that the, the global companies already have started considering coming to India and having a footprint in India. Besides China, or at times, in this China. I know that over 300 companies which are from the fortune thousand companies not small companies, they're great companies. Like General Electric, Apple, and so on. Are already in initial talks with our company government, considering India as the next footprint a democratic country for them to invest in, to make, and to come here. This is in line with 
the making India school in Cuban by our honor, the Prime Minister, excuse me, the Prime Minister. Uh, I know, and uh, this, is, this is known to everyone, that the French president, Mr. Macron, has openly confirmed that France is going to come to India. Seriously. You know, Airbus is a French company. The company that I founded, which is the Star Export House today, has, has partners as customers in the United States, Germany, Netherlands, and other places. And, and I have a feeling that the top cater of those companies are considering associating with India uh, in, a, in a better way. So, the Fortune 1000 companies and also other companies are considering coming to India in some way or other. There is a clear sign of shift to India. And this is the foremost advantage that we must know today, ahead of time. And my educated guess, I repeat, it is guess, but it is educated guess, is that in the next 12 to 18 months, we'll see this happening in a big way. Indian leaders and professionals can build value chains for critical products and services, like the pharma industry, like auto industry, like service industry, food industry, and so on and so forth. At this time, all the companies, the companies that are coming from out the world, and also the companies which are already there in India are bound to form, find, and pick up professionals talent locally, but they will expect that the new appointees speed up in their new roles. Till today we were talking of the gap in between academia and industry and so on and so forth and we are trying to bridge it to the best of our ability, but we have to, to be really quick on this because the professionals like you who are going to be out from the college should be ready to perform because the expectations from the companies would be that they the do that point is speed up their work in their new roles. Uh, let me here they come up with a with a new idea uh, that is a possibility again. Uh, but I foresee this possibility of uh, Uber jobs. I call it Uber, Uber jobs. This is highly likely in the coming days, in my opinion. And the engineers with certain skill sets can be chartered by the companies. You see, in profession or in business, Companies offer some services or products to the larger companies, but the individuals look only for employment. These Uber jobs, as I call it, will be offering some services to the companies. So this can be a self-employment, you can call it. There will be clusters of Uber engineers. There could be single engineers at charter companies. There could be networking platforms like Amazon for offering Uber engineers. And a cluster of Uber engineers can offer services, a part of the services that company needs, completely owning the, the responsibility as a package to the companies. So employment can change, or the face of employment can change. In the process, two things. One, the skill sets need to be improved. We'll be talking about that. 
for getting to the better jobs, for getting to professions like doctors, doctorates, like me, and practices. The Charter Engineer gets a degree and practices. A lawyer does the same thing. And tomorrow's Uber engineers, Uber professionals, Uber chefs can do the same thing. Like lawyers or doctors. They learn more than being an employee. So if tomorrow you are you are one part of a cluster of Uber engineers, you learn more. But you will perform more. The expectations will be more. Only then you can expect more. And there is a chance of vice versa also. If you don't skill yourself properly, there is a chance that uh, you're face difficulties. So better equip ourselves with the skill sets that are needed for the future. That is why when I say innovate self, change is necessary, empowerment is necessary, and skilling is necessary. We'll talk about the skills exactly in the next point. I'll now go to my third agenda point. To become ready for this, uh, enjoy the challenge, I call it. Uh, what steps I should take as a student to become ready for such a future? In this third agenda point, I'll just talk about three steps, no more steps. These steps, which I feel very important. And my dear students, you should consider adopting these three steps very seriously, very sincerely. And I'm convinced that these steps have potential to change your life. You can put yourself in the mainstream of tomorrow's needs. And these steps, third agenda point, three steps. The first step is rapidly identifying your likings and your skills. I say rapidly 